today, I'm going to have some fun. I'm going to increase, improve performance. I'm going to safeguard my engine by adding an extra fuel filter system. And I'm going to put in proper breathers for the axles and gearbox. And this is the engine, the 4.5 turbo diesel fitted to my Land Cruiser. And I'm at PDP, that's Perth, Perth Diesel Performance in Wangara. PDP is a place of choice because not only are there the agents for Unichip, the chip that I'm going to fit, more about that later, the official agents in Western Australia, but they are also Land Cruiser specialists. If you work on the same vehicle year after year after you start understanding its quirks and its funny little things and correcting any possible issues. So I'm totally confident that whatever is done to this vehicle today is going to be 100% effective and 100% reliable. Poor diesel purity is a common problem throughout Australia and this engine is very sensitive to dirty fuel. So a second filter is needed. This is where specialist knowledge really comes into play because Okay, the, and this, this is a bit of a guess, the, the injectors can handle without damage contaminants of 7 microns. So the filter has been upgraded from the standard, comes I think of the, the 20 micron filter or something like that, upgraded to 5 microns, so we're absolutely safe. It also has a water trap, so if you do get water contaminants, you can visually look at it and it's quite easy to drain. You can actually drain it uh, while it's still mounted in the vehicle. Basically this has to line up with a groove in there. Um, that has to line up with that and it's locked. But here's the interesting bit. These have been enlarged from the standard kit because through testing this specific vehicle again and again and again PDP the guys here found that in fact that it, the vehicle can actually suffer from fuel starvation at maximum power so they've upgraded this part I wouldn't have known that and if I had taken it to a workshop that is not really familiar with Land Cruisers they might not know that kind of stuff so anyway here it is it will be mounted on their really nice stainless steel brackets and I'll feel much safer with it. Next, to replace Toyota's diff and gearbox breathing apparatus, which is lacking to say the least. Toyota's standard differential breather is not very long. It's, it looks like about some, like a foot long. So, which in my mind is not, not long enough. It should be much higher for wade, deep water wading. You need longer. It's actually easily solved, and that's what we're gonna do now. Time to work on the Land Cruiser's performance. Now you might think that Land Cruiser V8 4.5 diesel, why on earth would I want to work on its performance? Surely it's sufficient. Yes, it is sufficient, absolutely. But as far as I'm concerned, the word power and performance are two very different things. I'm not looking for extra power. I don't need extra power. But wouldn't it be nice if I had enhanced performance? better fuel economy, better overtaking. Maybe I can control the engine so it'll deliver optimum performance and I, whether I'm on road or off road or whatever I'm doing with it, towing, you name it. And it's done with magic. Here is the magic Unichip Q4 chip and beneath it the two drivers that actually drive the injectors. You might have heard the expression plug and play. There are many chips on the market. Some of them are very, very good, some less so. Many of them, you buy them off the shelf and you literally plug them into your vehicle and play, go driving. This is the middle step between plug and play. And the reason for it, I think, is quite important. It's a bit like buying a T-shirt off the internet. Now, I can buy a, order a medium or I can order a large. Now a medium is just a bit tight. A large is 
It's a little bit baggy, but only slightly baggy, so I'll always order the large. But it'll never be perfect, will it? That's what a plug and play chip is all about. You plug it in and you're going to get a medium or you're going to get a large t-shirt. It's never going to be perfect. Every vehicle is different. Every engine is different. This middle stage is giving me the perfect t-shirt for my body. The perfect tune for my truck. My introduction to Unichip happened about 10 years ago when I met its inventor. This is a Lamborghini Gallardo, a four-wheel drive two-seat supercar powered by a V10 5-liter engine. It is owned by Peter de Fiat, a man who likes to explain that his children must have got all their good looks from him because his wife still has hers. Peter is a mechanic, but no ordinary mechanic, and his Lamborghini is his laboratory. His field of study? Making cars perform better, and he does it with electronics. How are we doing? Yeah, we're doing well. We're doing well? Just, just doing a baseball set up, and then we'll get a run and get up the temperature, and then uh, we start training, get a lot of data happening, and see what we can come up with. Expecting a kilowatt output to be with a brand new vehicle. What do you reckon? This is an unusual. I've never got into a 4x4 before and actually got down into it. And this, unlike any other 4x4, is a cozy little cocoon. But I'm not going to drive it. I am not qualified to drive anything close to as powerful as this so we're going to leave that to the professionals look i suppose if you're talking over rpm versus torque most of our stuff we're going to focus at 2000 rpm so 2000 rpm with a standard exhaust this intake on your snorkel may hinder it a little bit but we'll show you that uh probably somewhere 200 to 300 newton meters at, at the peak point which you feel when you're driving and then also kilowatt gain somewhere around 40 kilowatts. The benchmark placed there by themselves is what is purported to be the fastest production car in the world, yeah, the Bugatti Veyron. Obviously, because the figures I got, that was 9.22. 100 to 200 kilometers an hour in 4.3 seconds. That's very good. The 200 to 300 in 9.22, we did this in 7.63 seconds. So that's, that's substantially right. faster. And uh, 100 to 300 in 11.93. Gee, <laughs> that's even, even better than I hoped for. But as you can see, it comes up here. It's got a flat torque curve and pulls away. The power keeps gaining as we keep gaining in RPM. So what we're going to look for is the torque to come up here, follow back down there, and then the power here. So final power reading was 158.2, but if we come back down to 2000 RPM, which is this point here, 2000 RPM, yes. we can see up on the top of the screen we were 83 kilowatts in power, which is our power curve through here. The green is the original standard. Now the power curve with the hat, the original snorkel feed on it was 126 kilowatt tuned at 2000 RPM. With it removed, we were 130. So, and then if we come to torque, factory at 2000 RPM, we were 397 newton meters, and we're 622. So, I mean, it's almost just shy of 50 kilowatt gain at that, at that Okay, point so point. 2000 is where I'm, I'm doing 100 kilometers an hour and now I'm pushing the vehicle up a dune and I'm going up to 2000 to 8, 3000 RPM. Has the power curve moved? Am I getting power at lower RPM? So, or Now this is just power, there's no torque on the screen. Well for that same power that you had factory, we're now making... That okay, same power at, at 1800 RPM? Yeah, yeah, just shy of 1800. Yeah. 
and then peak power is now coming in at 400 rpm lower yeah. and coming in at and a lot broader as you can yeah, see so through it's here a, it's a flat yes yeah. it's it, it comes off quite quickly there and here it's very rounded yeah right so the same thing as if we go now we'll swap it we'll have a look at the torque so obviously before it's quite broad so obviously as we're coming across the whole rpm range it was very flat so even though you the kilowatt is gaining the torque which me i like to feel the torque that's the pulling power that's what's going to get you places kilowatts you're generally having to rev it to get it so the union chip will trim the fuel curve if it needs to so it's not a point of where it's going to turn the tune off for you it'll adjust it if it next needs to make two percent change the fuel curve it can do if it needs to make it 20 percent 60 percent or if you're in adverse conditions it may take 100 percent of the fuel curve out but that'll keep the engine in a safe place i'm uh, i'm looking forward to it Right now, time to uh, try out the, the Unichip. The Unichip has five maps. Number five, vehicle factory settings. Number four, vehicle factory settings with an increased speed of idle. Ideal for winching or when I'm using the compressor. Preset three, gentle throttle response. This will be ideal for off-road driving. Set two, high performance uh, quite active throttle response and setting one maximum performance fastest throttle response. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put it onto maximum power and I'm going to go onto the highway. I can accelerate to 100 kilometers an hour and I have no idea what to expect. I'm expecting it to be quite a bit more powerful than the vehicle see what happens. Carriers are not supposed to do this. Okay, this is ridiculous. It is a little bit comical about <laughs> it just took me by surprise, I think. The vehicle is it's come alive. The difference is astonishing when you think all it's done is change the timing of the injectors and the the boost pressure timing and it's amazing. I would be able to do donuts in this vehicle with ease and make great big black lines on the if I wished to. Okay, from 60 100. That's on the conservative setting. Fast car, fast, powerful car. Still, still handles like a dining room table, but it's fast. <laughs> 